Good morning. 2,000 years ago, a dove descended on a group of people in a locked room, and it was Pentecost. And the Spirit got in, and the church was born. Welcome, welcome, welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. We gather as God's people to worship and to celebrate and to praise and to, to live in the Spirit, the Spirit that gets in on this day and on all days. And so as we come into this time of worship, the flame burns bright in our midst. The fire of the Spirit burns on, in the Christ candle, burns as the Christ candle, burning to remind us that God is with us, that we are never alone, that God gets in. And we remember that we are part of a tradition. And we acknowledge the traditional territories of the Anishinaabek nation, the peoples of the three fires known as the Ojibwe and the Potawatomi and the Ottawa. And we further give thanks to the Chippewas of the Saugeen and the Chippewas of Nawash, now known as the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, as the traditional keepers of this land. So as we come into worship, we bring song and we sing a, the wonderful, wonderful Pentecost hymn from More Voices United, Come, O Holy Spirit, set our hearts on fire. So come out of the shadows and into the light of morning. Come, empty and depleted, 
but to be filled by God's spirit. Come sober in sorrow and leave drunk with joy. Come expecting nothing but be ready to be surprised. Above all, come and know that you are welcome here. Let us pray. Help us, O oh God, to see your technicolor spirit blowing through our lives, lighting up the darkness, bringing color to grayness, a constant rainbow, reminding us of your love and care and promise and that you are with us every day. Amen. Trudy will now read our Pentecost stories beginning in the Valley of the Dry Bones. Good morning. The first reading this morning is from Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord shall come upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you should know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you should know that I, the Lord God, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The psalm selection this morning is Psalm 104, and we're going to sing Refrain 2, Part 2, 24 to 35. How manifold are your works. With wisdom at your side you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There lies the great and mighty sea, teeming with living things, both great and small. Upon it sails the ships, and there is the Leviathan, the monster you made to play in it. All these things look to you to give them their food in due season. 
what you give them they gather up when you open your hand you fill them with good things but when you hide your face they disappear when you take away their breath they die and return to dust but when you send out your spirit they live again and you renew the face of the earth May your glory, O God, endure forever. May you rejoice, O God, in your works. When you look at the earth, it trembles. When you touch the mountains, they smoke. I will sing to God as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have being. The second reading for today is from Acts 2, 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear? each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they, filled, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing in the, with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and you sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In the year just in the year just before the war to end all wars, the First World War, the German poet Rainier Maria Rilke wrote a poem entitled The Sense of Something Coming. This poem reads like prophecy. I am like a flag in the center of open space. I sense ahead the wind which is coming and must live it through. While the things of the world still do not move, the doors still close softly, and the chimneys are full of silence, and the windows do not rattle yet. 
and the dust still lies down. Yet, I'm sure that all of you have experienced that sense of something coming. We are in the midst of living it right now in these COVID times. What's next? When will it be over? Are the kids ever going back to school? Are we ever going to get back into this building to worship together in person? What will be like when it's over? What is this new normal going to be? Something is coming, maybe by the end of summer. We are waiting for something that is just ahead on the horizon, or maybe for the other shoe to drop, or the calm before the storm. We sit in this anticipation of waiting for something that we have no idea of its power or of its importance or of the impact that it will have on our lives. That feeling, that sense of unrest, that dis-ease within is a pre-Pentecost moment. This is me right now. I am also having a hard time trying to find words to clarify this feeling. It doesn't help that I'm talking about a feeling and intuition, which in itself is an ambiguity, but nevertheless, I will try. I attended as much as I could this past week the Festival of Homiletics. It is a yearly event that happens in the U.S., and it is a gathering of some of the best preachers and preaching teachers in North America at this time. Because of the pandemic, for the last two years, it's been online, and that has enabled me to be able to attend. The, te the theme for 2021 was Preaching for the Future Church. I listened last week to some phenomenal preachers who challenged me to consider the words that I use when I preach, what I say, the sources that are used, how, how we read and interpret the Bible, our blind spots, our politics, the patriarchy, our privilege. We need to consider all these things before we open our mouths to preach the good news because preaching is so vital and crucial in this time. The church is not dying. The church is transforming. God has not stopped working in the world. Quite the opposite. God is actively moving in this world, but God may have left the building. The church as we knew it may be the past, but the church of the future is relevant and necessary and desperately, desperately needed in these uncertain times. The mission is changing and how we do church is developing. People are not so much being drawn into a building to share the gospel, but we are using the building to share the gospel out into the world. We are on the edge of an idea. We're in the, the messy middle of what was and what is to be. We are in the midst of the something is coming, but we know not what. This is what Ezekiel is feeling, standing on the edge of the valley with God. This is what the disciples are experiencing after Jesus has left them for that. And they sit in this locked room on this day of Pentecost. Something different this way comes. Aslan is on the move. The Spirit is coming. Can you feel it? God grabbed me, writes Ezekiel. God grabbed me, and God's Spirit took me up and set me down in the middle of a plain strewn with bones, and he led me around and among them lots and lots and lots of bones, and there were bones all over the plain, dry bones bleached by the sun. Noble laureate and Holocaust survival, survivor Ali Weasel says that there is no date to this vision of Ezekiel's vision in the Valley of the Dry Bones because Every generation needs to hear it in its own time, needs to hear that these bones can live again. So there Ezekiel is with God at the edge of this valley, looking down and sees this dryness, this despair, this destruction, all around his bones, bleached and white bones, all these places of losses and decay, our broken dreams, the longing for the way the things used to be, our yearning for lost loves and faded hopes and loneliness and despair and desolation. And God says, hey human, can these bones live? These bleached white dry bones of despair and anguish, these dry bones of hopelessness and dejection, these dry bones of apathy and lost dreams, can these bones live? And God says, hey human, prophesy. 
prophesy to these bones say to them bones listen hear God's voice it is calling you dry bones hear God's song it is singing to you the song of God dry bones hear God's message breath of life come into these bones and whoosh the breath of God blows over the valley and roar the breath of God forms and transforms these bones and brings them new life and God says to Ezekiel, human, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Listen to what they're saying. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. There is nothing left to us. And God says, these bones are the whole house of, of what? The whole house of what? Whole house of where? Whole house of the church? Are the bones of the church dried up? Is our hope gone? Is there nothing left for us? Whole house of the province in the midst of a pandemic with lockdowns continuing and reopenings dependent on percentage points of vaccinations and businesses just barely hanging on and parents coming to the understanding that school will not be open. Whole house of the world where there are wars and violence and environmental disasters and climate change, the dry bounds of drought and scorched earth and species being eradicated and global pandemics. Is this the whole house? Hey, human, can these bones live? And whoosh, the breath of God comes and blows over the people and swish, the wind of God blasts up systems of injustice and whisper, the breath lands gently in our hearts and roar, the breath of God forms and transforms and bones gather together, bone on bone, sinew on bone, flesh on sinew, and breath, new life. And God puts God's spirit and they live it's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine when you are a group of people who are discouraged and anxious and afraid and unsure of what to do and where to go and how to be and what is next. It's hard to imagine very much of anything, but this is where we join the disciples this morning in a locked room in Jerusalem, waiting for what they do not know, like Ezekiel, on the edge of something, waiting for what's next, the something's coming, and then whoosh, the breath of God blows in the room and roar. The breath of God forms and transforms the disciples and the Spirit whirls them all out into new life. And to the ones in that room on that day of Pentecost, God put God's Spirit within them and they lived. They lived. They got up off their behinds and they left that building and then they began to tell the world what God had done for them and how their lives were transformed because they knew Jesus Barbara Brown Taylor's words paint the picture of what happened to those disciples. And she writes in her sermon, The Gospel of the Holy Spirit. She says, before that day was over, the church had grown from 120 to 3,000. Shy people became bold. Scared people became gutsy. And lost people found a sense of direction. Disciples who had not believed themselves capable of tying their own sandals without Jesus discovered abilities within themselves they never knew they had. When they opened their mouths to speak, they sounded like Jesus. When they laid their hands on the sick, it was like Jesus himself had touched them. In short order, they were doing things that they had never seen anyone else but him do. There was no explanation for it except that they had inhaled on that Pentecost. They had sucked in God's own breath and they had been transformed by it. And the Holy Spirit entered them. You know, the world around them did not appear to change. The Roman Empire was still in control and all of the crazy drama that the white males jockeying for power was about was in full play. Patriarchy still had a firm grip on the powers that be. Women, children, the infirm, the disabled, LGBTQ, enslaved, still lived on the margins, denied even their personhood. The religious majority did not release its hold on power. Instead, they doubled down and they began to persecute and arrest and eventually execute a good portion of those 120 people who, were, who had sucked in God's own breath on that tumultuous day of Pentecost. The world did not change, and yet it did and the world was never the same again. Somehow, some way, those spirit-driven women and men, those God-breathing people, somehow managed to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the ancient Mediterranean world so that within 50 years, 
Christianity, what this new way was about to be called, was firmly entrenched in the culture, albeit as a fringe organization. But within 300 years, it was declare, declared as a state religion. Now careful here, I am not preaching that God got into the world in an institution. I think what I'm saying though is that God got into the world in spite of that institution. And God got into the world in a new way, which is the precipice we stand on today. Hey human, can these bones live? Prophesy to the born, prophesy to the bones. Say to the bones, you know that the God, that I am the Lord, and when I open the graves, I will bring you up from my graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you. Prophesy to the borns. Hey, disciples, you there in that locked room, can you leave your fears and your anxieties behind and prophesy to the bones? God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Hey, human, can these dry bones live? We stand as a flag in the center of an open space. Whoosh! The breath of God blows over the people and roar! The breath of God forms and transforms the bones and gathers them together, bone on bone, sinew on bone, flesh on sinew, and breath. Breath, the breath of God and new life emerges. May it be so in this time as well. Amen. And we sing together as we gather at your table. Welcome to the table. I invite you now, if you have not gone, to get some bread and some juice. It doesn't matter what kind. It's symbolic, symbolic of 
the meal that Jesus shared with his disciples, and all are welcome to share in this meal. The table is not the table of the United Church of Canada or the table of Southampton United Church. The table is God's, and all God's beloved are welcome to share in this feast. So come to this table where bread and cup are transformed by the Spirit of God into a meal of love and grace, a supper of visions and dreams, a table where all are welcome. Let us pray. Loving God, whose divine lungs inhaled the Spirit into our world, your breath continues to transform our world. From the still to the stirring, before the earth was formed, the Spirit of God swirled through the voids and shadows. As humans were created, the air of God filled the lungs of Adam and the soul of Eve. This divine air continues to fill us up when our bones are dry and our spirits are sluggish. On this day of Pentecost, when we celebrate the breath of the Spirit coming upon the disciples, we invite the Spirit to come upon these elements. God of winds, pour out your spirit to make the elements come alive for us. Make this meal awaken our sleepy hearts and stagnant souls. May this time of eating and drinking be where we stir up from our sadness and rise up from our hopelessness. May we begin to celebrate visions and animate the dreams that have only been alive in our minds. As we share this meal, let us remember our siblings in faith who come to this table in decades and centuries past and our children who will surround this table in the future, each generation uniquely celebrating your presence, spirit of life. The night before Jesus died was a solemn time around the table, breaking bread, drinking from the cup, Jesus asking to remember him in our eating and our drinking. There was a time to mourn followed by a time to dance. After the day of resurrection, the disciples ate on the beach with the risen Christ, celebrating new life, new hope new vitality. On this Pentecost, as we come to the table, let us celebrate the spirit of resurrection and the promise of a needed second wind in our own lives. So send your Holy Spirit God on us and what we do and as we break the bread and drink the wine, we may be united with Christ, he in us and us in him, and we who are many may be one in him, make us strong in faith and love that we may become truly human as Christ was truly human. At this time, we also remember all those with whom you would have us share your feast. We pray for all who are in sorrow or in pain, all who are ill or alone, all who live with fear, oppression, or hunger, all whom the world counts as last and least. We pray for your church. We pray for the nations as they strive for peace and justice, for the earth and the fragile web of life that we share. We pray for our families and our friends. Praise be to God, the source of love. Praise be to Christ, love incarnate. Praise be to the Holy Spirit, love's power. Praise be to God. Amen. And so we gather these and all our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as our mother who loves us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we remember Jesus with his disciples sharing the meal and taking the bread and breaking it and saying, this is my body and it is broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. Please take a moment now and break your bread. When the meal was over, Jesus took the cup and he filled it full of the fruit of the vine. I invite you to do the same. And then with your bread and your cup, hold them up. Because these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Come, 
for now all things are ready. The bread of life and the cup of blessing for you. Let us now share together. And we pray. Spirit of God, who fed the multitudes, provided the manna in the wilderness, and blessed the elements, we give great thanks for the meal eaten and the company surrounding us in the virtual world. Inspire us as we move forward this day and encourage us to transform our dreams into reality. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we take a moment now and we think of all the gifts and blessings that have been in our lives. We think of how we live in this world, how we love in this world, how we share, how we treat each other, how we embrace the spirit and do the work of the spirit. We take a moment and as we do that, we think of ways that we will offer back into the world through our financial contributions, through how we treat each other, through how we give to our neighbor, to how we love the stranger. Our tithes and our offerings will now be received. Let us pray. As you gift your spirit, Lord, may our gifts return to you in wisdom, in knowledge, in faith, in healing. May we always celebrate and share all your gifts here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Spirit of Gentleness. It is number 375 and more voice in Voices United, and the first three voices will be sung.
spirit of placidness, stir us up and send us out. So sisters and brothers in Christ, go into the world, realize the visions, fulfill the dreams and see new visions. Dream new dreams and as you do, know, know that the Holy Spirit is guiding you and encouraging you every step of the way. So go from this time deeply, deeply steeped in the love of God, knowing the wisdom of the Christ and knowing that that Holy Spirit will blow you from your placidness and out into the world to love and to serve, to care and to share in God's way. May your day be blessed. May your week be blessed. Take good care and look after each other. Amen.